Dr. Zawicki, can you describe the prognosis of a patient with advanced late stage ovarian cancer? Yes, uh, unfortunately the symptoms of ovarian cancer are very subtle. So when um, women first go to their physician, many of those women have advanced ovarian cancer. 20% um, of patients that are treated um, in a first-line therapy, which is usually surgical debulking and chemotherapy, 20% of those patients uh, will not respond to the therapy. The other 80% of the patients that do respond initially uh, will develop what we call recurrent tumors. And that's because the cells, uh, there are tumor cells that um, develop resistance to the chemotherapeutics that are commonly used. Um, so the, the women that develop these recurrent tumors, only uh, 50, well 50 to 60 percent of those women will succumb to the disease. So overall the five-year uh, survival rate for women is about 42 percent. Um, for women that have ovarian cancer. So there's a real need for a better and more effective therapy. Um, can you tell me what suicide genes are and how they work? Yes, the suicide gene that we're using is a gene that encodes a toxin, diphtheria toxin, which is the same toxin uh, that causes diphtheria disease for which we're all inoculated against as babies. What we've done is to genetically engineer the protein that encodes, the gene that encodes the diphtheria toxin uh, so that it no longer causes disease. But what it does is when this gene gets into a tumor cell, the um, toxin is made and then protein synthesis shuts down in the cell. So all cells need to produce protein in order to survive and since the tumor cell will no longer make protein, it dies, and that's why we call it a suicide gene therapy. And you use a nanoparticle delivery system for this. How did you come up with that, and what does it do to this? Yeah, our nanoparticle therapy consists of a polymer that we combine with DNA, and what happens is the DNA condenses and we form these tiny little nanoparticles. So the therapy is delivering DNA that encodes the toxin rather than the toxin protein itself. And what this approach allows us to do is attach what we call regulatory sequences to the DNA that will determine uh, where the DNA is, is activated and produces the toxin protein. So it allows us to target the, to the toxin to the tumor cells, but the toxin won't be made in healthy cells. So does this provide ovarian cancer patients with a reason for hope? Yes, there's definitely reason to hope uh, with this new therapy. Um, so with the nanoparticles, we can target the therapy to the cancer cell and not to healthy cells. And so unlike chemotherapeutics, that have deleterious side effects. We're not affecting um, the health of the normal cells. Um, in addition, in our study in mice, uh, we've shown that the nanotherapy uh, works as well or better than the standard chemotherapeutics that are used now for the treatment of ovarian cancer. So our hope is that when we go and treat people and women with these uh, with this therapy uh, that it will have the same benefits as in mice. And why did you select Cancer Research as the journal to publish these findings? Well, Cancer Research is one of the premier journals uh, in the field and it has a very broad readership. So we've worked so hard on this project uh, for so many years we were hoping uh, that we would um, get out there and tell our story to a lot of people. Great. Thank you, Dr. Zoicki.